Hey everybody, it's Kendra here. Welcome back to this DIY Mom Life. In today's video, I'm going to go through four super budget sock yarns. All of these yarns can be found at a Michael's store. Some of them can be found at Walmart as well. And so I wanna share with you my experiences in working with them, um, as well as kind of a comparison between the four different types. All right, let's jump into the video. So the four yarns I'm going to be going through today are the Red Heart, Heart and Soul, Bernat Socks, Lion Brown Yarn in the Sock Ease, and Patton's Croy. Now, possibly you've heard me speak of some of these before, and if you're interested, I did share in my sock, my sock drawer tour video um, kind of how some of these socks have worn in addition to the other socks that I have. But I wanna speak a little more specifically about these four yarns as all inexpensive and accessible options that are generally locally available. For this video, all the pricing will be in Canadian dollars as I see on Amazon because they're all readily available and I'll link them all below. But as you're probably aware, Amazon, sometimes the prices fluctuate a little bit. So just keep that in mind. First up is the Red Heart Heart and Soul yarn. Now this yarn says it is 73% wool and 27% nylon, even though to me it feels like a really synthetic yarn and so I'm really surprised there is such a high wool content in it. Red Heart yarn is sold at Walmart, at Michaels, it is sold in my local Fabricland store. It's generally across the board known to be um, an acrylic fiber and it retails for $6.50 to $9 a ball, depending on, and this is looking at Amazon again, Again, where sometimes the different colors are different price points. So within that ball, it is 50 grams and 187 yards. So some people use two 50 gram balls to make one pair of socks, depending on the size of feet and how long you like to knit your leg. I generally do make shorter socks and can knit one pair of socks from the 50 gram ball, especially with contrasting heels or toes or cuffs. So I made a pair of this type of yarn a while ago, and this is what it's looking like right now. This is the Victorian colorway, and I use the black heart and soul for the toes, heels, and cuffs. Now, part of the reason I thought this was so a higher synthetic content is because I had a lot of issues with my uh, woven in ends coming out. Now, this may be mostly my fault. However, I've done it the same way on a lot of different pairs, and this one just didn't seem like the ends um, stayed in, like it was more slippery and kind of working its way free. So that's kind of a point of concern for me. Now again, could be user error, but that's definitely something that I had noticed. Also the fact that this is straight out of the washing machine. I do wash, especially with these cheaper yarns, these socks all in the washing machine. I would say that they have worn fairly well, um, and it is not the worst of the bunch, I don't think. There is some pilling, and you can see there, a little hard to see, there is a little bit of pilling, um, but generally they have worn well. And this is a pretty good and expensive option. Next up, I want to speak about the Bernat Socks, S-O-X. This yarn, I shouldn't say wool because it has zero wool in it. It is 60% acrylic and 40% nylon. It retails for around $4.50 to $8 a ball. And uh, it is 50 gram ball as well. So 210 yards in these ones. First off, I'll show you on the sock blocker. This is what my sock looks like. And this was a fairly early pair of socks I made and I don't wear it much. And part of the reason for that is that it just does not keep its shape well. I'll take it off and you can see it's just, I don't know, it just feels misshapen. It, um, I'm not claiming that this is a perfect sock by any means, but when you wear it, it just kind of stretches and becomes limp. Like it, it doesn't have the memory that wool does in my opinion. And it just, it's fine for other projects and I have used it for that. But just for socks, it's not my favorite. It has not seen as much wear as many of the other socks in my collection. And so it is also looking pretty well on the sole and maybe the acrylic is good for that. But for me, it does not make the same comfortable sock. It's not breathable in the same way that the other ones are. Um, again, just my opinion with that. Some people may like that, especially if you have a wool sensitivity, it could be a good option. It's definitely more, it, it, it definitely can be an inexpensive option, especially like if you're getting some of the colors that are on the lower end of that price range and it can be a good accent. So I, I mean, it's not awful, but it's definitely not the best and it has its issues. So kind of one of those work at your own risk sort of situations. 
Patton's Croy is the next one to discuss. Now this is definitely what I would consider to be like a crowd favorite. I've heard a lot of knitters talk about Patton's Croy in a pretty positive light. Not all the way, um, definitely some criticism as well, but just um, description wise. It is a 50 gram ball with 166 yards. It has 75% washable wool and 25% nylon in it. Now Patton's Cry retails for between $7 and $12 a ball. I think it's a pretty nice yarn. It holds up really well as you are wearing it. Um, it really makes a comfortable sock. I have heard some criticism in terms of certain colors being more scratchy than others. I'm not really sensitive to more rustic wool, so that hasn't been a complaint of mine, but that is kind of a complaint I have heard. Also that the um, that the weight of the yarn can vary between colorways, which is kind of interesting and I don't know if that is true. I have tried a couple colors of it and have not found that to be the case, um, but just that certain colors are more on the light fingering weight side of things and certain are more on like the heavier side, all within the range, but that there is some variety within it. This one here you can tell is a self-striping ball and they also have other variegated and solid options. I certainly think it's a good yarn. Um, definitely by the time if you are purchasing two balls to make a pair, which I mean I know a lot of people do, if the first ball was $12, $24 for 100 grams is not like the cheapest pair of socks by any means, um, but it is accessible and there's a really wide variety of colors within the line. So that may be a good option for you. The last yarn I want to discuss is the Lions brand Sock Ease. Now this yarn is 75% wool and 25% nylon. If you've been around my channel much, you've probably heard me talk about this because I have dyed it and to me it's been a really good tester option because there's a marshmallow color that's always stocked at my Michaels and it takes dye really well and it's just been really fun to experiment on. So Sock Ease retails for around 10 to 13 dollars a ball however it's a hundred gram skein and it has 438 yards so of all of these options, to me, it's my pick. It's the number one because even though I think there are fewer color choices, having that marshmallow, the white one that's so easy to dye and to give you 100 grams for pretty much the same price point as the other ones, to me makes it the most affordable and the best yarn. It's not acrylic, it just is a nice blend of the two. These socks have worn really well for me and uh, it's a nice feeling yarn in my opinion. Again, it's not like the softest, there's no cashmere, there's no extensive fibers, but for a really basic workhorse sort of yarn, I think it's a great option. Now, if we're gonna be purchasing outside of the local craft store, some of the better options are not a lot more expensive. Like purchasing a skein of 100 grams for about 13 something from Acme Fibers is not a bad price compared to some of these ones here. Really, it's pretty comparable to say the, well, any of these for 100 grams. And so it may be worth it if you're going to be um, knitting more than one pair to look at these options and see if it is a better price point for you, but you would have to order online, order it in, possibly dye it. There's steps to it. Um, but just to keep that in mind, that sometimes the cheapest local options are not actually the cheapest or the best. I'd suggest checking out Knit Picks if you are ordering online as well. They definitely have a lot of affordable yarns. That could be an option. Also, I'm really excited. I have... Um, also, I'm really excited. I have the opportunity to try out a knit crate. I'm not sure if you've heard of it, but they have like a sock subscription um, monthly service, sort of where every month you get a skein of sock yarn and it's $19.95 with, um, and that includes both the yarn and a pattern. So that's something I haven't tried yet. I'm really interested to see how that compares with some of these other options. All right, so that's what I wanted to share the comparison of today. I will leave links to all these different yarns down below. I really appreciate if you've tried these out, let me know and let the other people are watching this know in the comments, which is your favorite, what are some pros and cons that you've experienced. And yeah, I look forward to reading the discussion. Some of these videos, the comment section gives so many good ideas from other knitters who have a lot of experiences as well. And it's really helpful to read those. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos from me, please consider subscribing and until next time, bye.